We're just excited to have you again. We're in the season of celebrating. Uh, we just celebrated Juneteenth as we celebrated the freeing of the slaves, the last group of slaves hearing that they were free in Galveston, Texas. And now as America celebrates uh, her birthday, July 4th, we're just in this celebration, this time of just thanking God for freedom, freedom in our country, freedom uh, from bondage. But also, this is a good time to celebrate the freedom that only Christ can give. When we think about the world, the trouble of the world, uh, there's so uh, much violence, there's so much just evil, there's so much out there. But if we focus on those things, they can keep us down, they can keep us bound, they can keep us tied up. But if we look to Christ, if we look to him, we're free from all the problems of the world because Christ is the only one that can truly give us freedom. He gives us freedom from the pains that we face every day. He gives us freedom from the hurts and worries that we go through because Christ, he is the one who carries the load for us. He's there beside us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. So no matter what we see going on in the world, on our even on our worst days, we know that we have freedom in Christ Jesus that we don't have to worry about all the pain of the world because he knows it, he sees it, and he's there to bear our burdens with us and for us. So today we're gonna to be looking at a passage from the gospel according to Luke. Luke is in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Luke was a physician and he uh, got all these sources and he put all this information together to give his account, the gospel according to Luke, the good news according to Luke, to give his account of Jesus' life. He starts out with his birth and then he begins to talk about, you know, just the life and ministry of Jesus. So today we find uh, in Luke chapter four where Jesus goes before the crowd. He's in his hometown and he's letting them know that he is the one that they have been waiting for. He is the one that is sent by God to, you know, free the slaves, to help with bondage, to carry all the, the burdens of the world. And as he's telling this message, the people, they don't want to hear it. They reject him. They're not feeling his message. Uh, but people will reject us. People will reject Christ. But that doesn't negate the fact that Christ died for us and our sins. In this world, there will be evil. There will be trouble. But we have the confidence as believers, as Christians, to know that Christ, one day when this life is over, Christ is going to claim back this world. Christ is going to have all victory. Christ is going to have all power. He's already settled it on the cross. So we don't have to be bound. We don't have to be guilty of our sins. But if we believe in him and trust in him, he will wipe away all that. He wipes away the tears and the pains, but we have to trust him. We have to go to him. So let's see what Luke has to say. Luke 4, 16 through 19, Jesus went back to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as usual, he went to the meeting place on the Sabbath. When he stood up to read from the scriptures, he was given the book of Isaiah, the prophet. He opened it and read, the Lord's spirit has come to me because he has chosen me to tell the good news to the poor. The Lord has sent me to announce freedom for prisoners, to give sight to the blind, to free everyone who suffers, and to say this is the year the Lord has chosen. In those passages, Jesus has come to town and Jesus does what we're all supposed to do. He goes to the church. He goes uh, to his place of worship. And because, you know, Jesus is this minister, this preacher, or in their culture, rabbi, they ask Jesus to give a word. And so Jesus reads from the Old Testament because back then they didn't have the New Testament. It was still being lived by Jesus's life. Jesus reads from these scrolls in the Old Testament and Jesus you know, talks about what Isaiah, Isaiah had promised this group of believers. Isaiah had promised the world that somebody was coming. Somebody was coming to give freedom to everybody. And Jesus goes there and lets him know, lets them know that, hey, that person is me. I am here. I have come to fulfill what the scripture has said. I have come uh, to uh, give good news to the poor, uh, to announce freedom sight to the blind and we see that throughout jesus ministry he does that he heals the sick he raises the dead he opens the eyes and you're maybe thinking hey you know jesus did that back then but what is he doing now jesus still does that but in a different sense he opens our eyes when we see things that look you know that looks unfamiliar jesus will open our eyes to see it in a better way jesus when we you know the poor you know when we feel down and when we feel sad when we feel poor at heart when we feel poor in our mood, Jesus will uh, 
give us strength and Jesus will make us happy. Jesus uh, encourages us and give us, gives us joy when we talk to him and read his word. So although we might not see the miracles back then, Jesus is still freeing us through his word, through his message, because what his word says, it's so powerful and it changes our lives. It changes our hearts. We just got to open up what the Bible has to say to us and it can make any situation look better. And there's so much evil in the world. There's so much hate in the world. And you're like, where is God in that picture? But when evil and tragedy comes, people are gathering together that normally wouldn't gather together. So even in the midst of tragedy, Jesus shows up by his people coming together. So the word, the Lord works in different ways. The Lord, uh, we may not, we may feel that he should be doing this, but God, he knows what's best and he'll send his son to do things. Uh, and what he feels is the best way. We might not get it in the beginning, but hopefully God will open our eyes so we can see what he's doing. We can see how even in the midst of suffering, he's bringing us together because there's suffering in the world that gives us a, uh, opportunity to go help people so even though this world is filled with bad stuff jesus is wants to use us to be the light of the world jesus wants to use us to show people who might not know him uh, how that he does exist through other people so we can be we can show other people jesus by being nice to them uh, by providing assistance to them when they're in need so yes jesus is still here jesus is still opening eyes jesus is still healing it Healing, but Jesus is doing it through you and I. So we're going to go look at John, the gospel according to John. It's another gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John's gospel is a little bit different. Uh, John's going to be talking. John's going to be talking about freedom in this passage as well, John chapter eight. And so we're going to see how the people in this situation also rejected Jesus. But even though people reject Jesus, we still have to show people that Jesus exists because they don't like him or they think he's false. We still got to be the good. We still got to show them that Jesus lives in each of us. John 8, 34 through 38. Jesus replied, I tell you for certain that anyone who sins is a slave of sin and slaves don't stay in the family forever through the son will always remain in the family. If the son gives you freedom, you are free. I know that you are from Abraham's family, yet you want to kill me because my message isn't really in your heart. I'm telling you what my father has shown me just as you're doing what my father has taught you. Just like all the suffering in the world can bring us down, so can sin. Sin is something that traps us. When we think about when we do wrong and disobey our parents, all those things that make us feel bad, it gives us guilt, uh, it just... It's not a good feeling. And so Jesus here is telling this group that sin can entrap you. You can become a slave of sin if we're not careful. If you think about how all the bad stuff in the world impacts us, our own sins, our own actions, when we're always trying to do wrong and do mischief, in the end, we're going to feel bad because that's not what children of God are supposed to do. Christ died on the cross for our sins. Christ forgave us. And so we are to act a certain way. And when we don't do anything, God's spirit is working in us to let us know that, hey, we're wrong. And so in that way, we can become a slave to sin if we're not careful. But when you think about doing good and helping people, that just feels, you know, better. It's just the right way. It makes us feel warm inside. It makes us feel better inside when we help other people. But when we're out there doing wrong, and if you think about, if you tell a lie, uh, that's a sin. And the more lies you tell, you have to tell another lie and another lie and another lie. And so you become trapped and you become set up by that sin, just by that one lie. But Christ is telling in this verse uh, that we are no longer slaves to sin. By believing in him, he takes the guilt of that sin away. We're no longer trapped. We have freedom in Christ Jesus. But that means we got to trust him. We got to believe him and we got to work on those areas in our life where we mess up. We can't just keep sinning and expect uh, to be children of God because sin, it just leads us down a very, very bad path. But when we talk to Christ and help ask him for help, he helps us to become better. He helps us so that we do not sin. So in this verse that John is talking about, you know, he opens up there letting us know that sin, uh, we can become slaves to sin. It traps us because it causes us to continue to do wrong and causes us to do bad stuff. So we're going to do a quick game, uh, see if you can get untrapped out of these mazes. And
All right, I'm gonna put some mazes on the screen. See if you can get through them before I draw through them. We'll see who's the quickest. All right, this is our first one. Let's see if you can get to the end of it before I can go. Okay. How you doing? <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's look at our next one. It's gonna get a little bit harder. Yep, a little bit harder. <laughs> go. I can't even keep my finger straight. How you doing? Did you get to the end of it before me? Oh, wow. Bam. <laughs> How did you do? Did you beat me? Last one's going to get really hard. All right. Go. I'm going to have to go slow. I bet you're going to win this one because I am going so slow. Look, I lost my line. Oh, yeah, I lost my line. Like, I lost my line again. <laughs> I'm going to let y'all handle that one. Did you get to the end of it? That one was too hard. It's hard. We got to think about getting out of those various traps and finding a way out. But Jesus is letting us know that he is the way out. This world can have us trapped. This world has sets up, setups, and this world has places to get us cornered. But if we follow Jesus, he is the way out. In this John text, in this John, these verses here, Jesus is talking to a group of people who could understand about slavery. Their ancestors had been in Egypt. Their ancestors were trapped in slavery and they knew slavery was hard. You worked long hours. You couldn't do what you wanted to do. You could, you would, um, there were chances you would be bought and sold, moved from place to place. It was just hard and difficult, but Jesus is telling uh, the people that he's talking to in these verses, and these verses are for us today. He's letting them know that he is the one who sets us free, that uh, sin is like uh, being trapped as a slave. We can be a slave to sin. I told you about lying and lying, and it just bills and bills and bills. Jesus is letting this group know that he is uh, the true son of God. You know, if we think about slaves, slave masters would sell and trade off their slaves, but their children, they would keep their children because their children belong to him and, and them. And so Jesus is letting them know that his father is in control of everything. And he is that true son. And because he's the true son, he has authority over everything. And if you stick to him, if you believe in him, you won't be traded and move from sent from place to place. But if you stick to him, you will have freedom. You will have the liberty that, that the uh, pain and hard work, you won't have to deal with that. And of course, Jesus is using a picture. And we know that the freedom we get in Jesus is that uh, we don't have to feel bad. We don't have to feel pain. We don't have to feel all of this just difficulties by ourselves, but he is there with us holding our hand and trusting us trusting uh you know guiding us and leading us and we trust him and he will help us through whatever we face and that's the story that jesus is letting them know slaves were bound to their master but jesus belongs to god and jesus has control over everything and so jesus is the much better choice to this group and of course, they did not believe him. They ultimately rejected him. And the story goes on, of course, where Jesus is uh, crucified and dies on the cross. But, but that's a good thing. Even God worked that out because him dying on the cross, uh, again, allows us to be free from our sin and allows us to no longer have that ultimate penalty of all our wrong actions, which is hell. But when we trust and believe in Jesus, we go to heaven. And so that's what Jesus is telling us here. Believe in him and he will give you freedom. He will give you freedom from all the bad stuff that we see and face in this world. The people rejected Jesus, but I encourage you not to reject Jesus. I encourage you to believe him. I encourage you to talk to him. I encourage you to read his word. I encourage you to pray to him. So as we close, let us pray one last time and I'll let you go on about your day. And thank you for listening with us. Let us pray. 
Most gracious God, we just honor and thank you, Father God, not because of what you do, but because of who you are. God, we thank you for our ultimate freedom, which is found in Christ Jesus. He died on the cross for the redemption of our sins, for our forgiveness. God, you didn't have to do that. We are wrong people. We do so much bad stuff, God, but you thought it uh, right to give us freedom. You thought it right to not uh, allow us to have to carry this heavy weight. So you sent your son and we tell you, thank you. God, I pray that you bless everyone that's listening to this message. Encourage them, strengthen them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen and be blessed.